Ad fraud. If you are buying advertising online in the form of impressions or clicks, you are likely losing a lot of money to fake traffic or botnets. In fact, in a study done by WPP and cited on the Business Insider, in 2016, roughly $16 billion was lost to fraudulent traffic. In 2017, that number went up to $19 billion. And currently, the World Federation of Advertisers estimates that this problem will be a $50 billion problem by 2027. In this video, I'm going to describe ad fraud, how it relates to us media buyers and how we can mitigate our risks so that we don't lose a ton of money to ad fraud and we spend more money on human traffic that converts. Hi there, Joey Babineau from dayjobhacks.com. Today we're gonna to talk about ad fraud. I've been doing media buying for roughly 15 years now. I've spent hundreds of thousands, or not millions, on advertising, and I'm sure hundreds of thousands on fake bot traffic. In fact, a recent study done by the Association of National Advertisers and White Ops indicated that over 35% of ad impressions are attempted by bots or bot networks. I'm going to describe how this works and why it's a huge problem and 10 ways that we as advertisers online can protect ourselves and mitigate the risk involved in this type of criminal activity that's happening. But before we get into that, please like my channel or subscribe to my channel and share this video with anyone you know that buys advertising online. So why ad fraud? Why are criminals targeting us advertisers online? Well, it is a multi-billion dollar industry and criminals follow the money and it's a lot easier to steal from a bunch of advertisers than it is to go into a bank and rob the bank. It's a lot harder to get detected when you're behind a computer screen and you're protecting your identity that way. So how does ad fraud work? One of the most common, just so you get a grasp of what we're dealing with here, is through the use of botnets. Now botnets are a network of infected computers that are called botnets nodes and the botnet is is operated or controlled by an attacking party so it could be a single person it could be a whole criminal organization who manages this botnet or it could just be a single hacker like I said down in his basement creating a botnet of a whole bunch of infected computers and these computers are infected with what is called malware you may have heard of malware before or adware and this is a type of software that gets installed on your computer and it gives this botnet control of your computer. There's an advantage to this because what happens is this botnet now has control of say millions of computers around the globe, all on different residential IP addresses so that they have full control of a whole bunch of different computers which makes it very difficult to detect what all those computers are connected to which is the botnet. So why does this matter? Why, why does that help this criminal organization? Well, now that they have access to millions of computers around the world, they can do many things. They can attack websites by doing a DDoS attack, which is basically having all those computers visit the website at the same time and trying to force that website down. The people that really want to make money are the ones that are using those computers to pretend that they are humans going into websites and clicking on advertisements. And when they do that, they make money. So now let's talk about how the money flows into the criminal organizations from my pocket, your pocket, and anyone else that advertises online. There are two common ways that these botnet attackers make money from us. And one of them is either through renting out their botnet to other people that own websites so that those people can use the botnet to get traffic to their website, which they in turn sell to other people or the botnet operator owns the website and they use their botnet to get all of that traffic to come to their website where they make the money and they earn the money directly rather than renting out their botnet. Those are the two ways generally how they make money from this type of setup. So me as a website owner myself, I might want to make money from my website. So I'm going to put ads on my website. So I'm going to join an ad network an ad network is a network of a multiple different publishers and advertisers who connect together where the advertisers pay to have their 
ads placed onto these websites. So if I am a website owner, I would take a little snippet of code and put it onto my website. And anytime somebody came to my website and started clicking on ads or viewing ads, I could make a little bit of money from the ad network. Putting myself in the shoes of a publisher, my goal is to get as much traffic to my website as possible. And even if that means, you know, using millions of different computers around the world, that's what these criminals are doing. They're sending the traffic to their website and they're getting paid by the ad networks who are in turn getting paid by advertisers. So me as an advertiser who goes to a place like say Google ads or Outbrain ads, these are native ads. If I go in there and I buy traffic, I could potentially be buying traffic from these third party websites that are fraudulently attacking the entire network, okay? And it's happening so much that it's estimated anywhere between 11 to 13% of our ad spend is being spent on fraudulent traffic. So the bottom line is the more traffic that comes to these websites, the more money they make from people like me who are buying the ads. Okay, sure, Joey, that sounds great. So why don't you just block all of the bad publishers because surely you are tracking all of your data. You know which publishers are sending you the traffic. So why not just monitor and block the bad publishers? Yes, that sounds great in theory, but in reality, there are so many different metrics to look at that these bots have actually become so sophisticated they can fake the metrics. For example, if we wanna track our landing page click-through rates from certain publishers, that's fine, but these bots can also fake clicking through ads and clicking through landing pages. So they'll click an ad, then they'll click through the landing page, and sometimes they'll even enter a fake email address. These bots are very sophisticated, and if you're using behavioral metrics like scroll depth or time on the page or click-through rates, it doesn't necessarily mean you're able to detect bot traffic. It is also a fact that some of the best publishers out there that convert really well also have bot traffic. So if you detect bot traffic from these places and you block the entire publisher rather than learning how to block certain aspects of their traffic or having systems in place to block IPs, then you may not be able to protect yourself and you may start seeing yourself losing a lot of conversions. Okay, so that's fine. Why not just target the best placements out there like CNN, Fox News, or whatever ones you think are the best placements. They surely cannot have fraudulent traffic, right? Well, actually they can. And it's hard to believe that these major news networks could have fraudulent traffic clicking on your ads. And I'm gonna tell you how it's done. In fact, what happens is a lot of these publishers sell ad placements or ad inventory to many different parties involved. Some sell it to ad platforms that we buy our traffic from, or they do direct media buys with people that come to them and say, hey, I'll give you a million bucks if you put my ad up on this page and I'm expecting this many impressions. So if the ad network is already selling most of their impressions elsewhere, they need to create more impressions. So how do they create more impressions? They buy traffic from third party platforms, just like you and I are doing, or any other company, when we go out and buy ads from ad platforms like Outbrain or Taboola or Google or Facebook. We are buying traffic. That is what these ad platforms, or that is what these major publishers are doing as well. So that is why we start seeing ads from CNN on native ad platforms, okay? They're advertising, they're buying traffic to get there so they can resell it at a higher price and this creates an arbitrage where they're getting super cheap traffic to their website and they're selling it at a higher price, okay? That is how the ad fraud gets on their network is because they are getting the same pool of traffic that we are when we buy from ad platforms. Now picture this on a grand scale where millions of websites out there are advertising that they have ad placements and they're buying traffic from native ad platforms or push ad networks that's super cheap traffic from all around the world. They're buying all of this traffic they're, that makes it appear like they're getting a bunch of visitors to their website. So you go and buy a direct media buy on these placements thinking you're gonna get some great traffic, but in fact, you're also getting fraudulent traffic. 
It is an endless scheme. Now we have to remember this is a global problem and this is also a problem amongst ad networks where they're actually also making millions and millions of dollars from this ad fraud going through their networks. Their motivation to really crack down on ad fraud probably isn't as high as ours when we're the ones really losing the money. So are we destined to fail as online advertisers considering these major hurdles that we have to go through? Well, I don't think so. Thankfully, there are organizations and companies out there working to tackle this problem for us. In the meantime, we have to do our own thing. For example, there are some organizations out there we can use ourselves to look at this problem. One of the companies would be humansecurity.com. I am not advertising for them. I just found them when I was doing my research. They are responsible for tracking over 10 trillion interactions on the internet per week. And they're looking for all signs of humanity on their interactions and on their examinations of these interactions, okay? So that is, uh, that is why they call themselves human security. They're looking for real traffic and they work with companies to detect real traffic and they have the ability to not just block an entire publisher if they have uh, bad traffic. They will block the bad traffic and send the good. The company has been growing a lot and they were recently acquired by the Goldman and Sachs Merchant Banking Division and report to have increased their customer base by 34% last year. So this is a good sign that companies are actively working to, to stop fraud. Another group you may want to check out is TAG or Trustworthy Accountability Group. What they do is they certify companies to say that they are actively working to fight off fraud or ad fraud, okay? You can actually go and search their database and see companies that are actively working with this group to tackle the problem of ad fraud. So if you're looking for ad platforms to work with and you see them on here, I think it is a good sign to know that they are actively working to block fraud from their networks. Another place is the Media Rating Council, which I believe does the same thing, and they have a report on their website which talks about their standards on how to how they rate companies based on how they're protecting their clients from fraudulent activities. Okay, so the moment we've been waiting for, what are 10 ways we can protect ourselves as online ad buyers, and how can we make our business better in spite of all of the fraudulent activity that is happening online with our advertising. Well, number one, in my opinion, is we need to establish working relationships with our ad platforms. In other words, we need to work directly with them. We need to ask them the tough questions. What are you doing for ad fraud? What kind of systems do you have in place? How do I know that I'm not getting a whole bunch of fraudulent publishers when I buy traffic from your network? Can you set me up on the best publishers? All of those things are discussions you need to have with your ad platform. Now it's harder when you're dealing with places like Facebook or Google, but some of these smaller ad platforms out there who are selling ads from multiple different publishers, these are the places you really need to establish relationships with. Number two is monitor your traffic and consider using a third-party fraud detection tool. I use my own third-party tracking system for my affiliate campaigns where I can start monitoring behavioral metrics like ad click-through rate or landing page click-through rate, time spent on page, all of these things uh, that you would consider that a bot wouldn't be able to do. However, the bots can do that. So you can't only rely on behavioral metrics. You really need to rely on conversions and where the money is being made. But remember, there are so many different factors at play that sometimes you could have a really good day on a publisher one day it might go really bad because they started buying traffic from a third party and then it goes back to normal. So you need to know how these things work so you understand how your money is being spent and why your campaign may be going up and down certain times of the month or certain times of the year. So all of this can be done by using third party tracking and third party fraud detection services. Again, do a Google search and you'll find multiple tools that can do that for you. Number three is build your own traffic source. Okay, so every time you're sending traffic to your website, it's important that you have play, systems in place to collect a subscriber or collect a push subscriber, uh, whether it be an email list or you're building a push list or you're building a, a list of phone numbers. If you can collect data from your customers or your visitors, you can eventually have your own traffic source that you know is real people that you can always constantly send more offers and more uh, information about your business too. Number four is establish a social media brand or a brand through social media. 
using social media channels and having multiple different channels, not just social media, but building a brand for your company so that people will come to you. You know the real people because they like your content, they like your product, and they like what you have to offer. Number five is build content on your website that gets found on search engines. Okay, it's very, it's not really worth it, I don't think, for fraudsters to focus on trying to steal traffic from search engines unless it's from paid ads. So if you can get free traffic to your website, like social uh, search engine optimization traffic where you're getting shown in the search results of Google or you're being searched on YouTube, stuff like that, then that is a great source of traffic that you know is from real people. If you're watching this video, I'm pretty sure you're a real person because I haven't paid to get you to watch this video. Number six is consider doing viral marketing using the new social media platforms out there like TikTok or Facebook short videos, even YouTube's doing short videos now. If you can get into that type of uh, viral marketing and that works, especially if you even also consider using influencers to do this for you. So if you can find influencers that already have a viral social channel, get them to do the marketing for you, pay them, and you'll know that most of their visitors are likely real people because it's really hard to fraudulently get influencers to do something for you. Um, so I think this is a very viable traffic source. Number seven is for people that are running search ads. If you're running search ads, it is a fact that your competitors could likely be setting up these botnets to click on your ads, okay? It's very um, hard to do, it's not easy, but some competitors out there are doing that and they have the capability to beat Google at their own game, okay? So if you have competitors that you know are always outranking you, maybe you need to look at ways to block them from clicking your ads. I know this is going to be very difficult. You might have to do some research on that um, or maybe um, block certain IPs that you're finding constantly clicking. Now there is software out there to automate that. Um, there's one called ClickSees. I never used it myself, but it is one of those um, softwares that advertises the fact that they can detect these types of fraudulent clicks. Number eight is to consider offline marketing. I know this isn't really on topic, so I'm not going to dive into offline marketing, but there are newspaper ads, radio ads, um, whatever else you do offline to advertise. Number nine is consider using affiliates and paying them a CPA. Now this opens up a whole new spectrum of scams because some affiliates are in fact scamming and doing scams to CPA offers, but by paying only when somebody converts into a customer, there are multiple networks out there you can use for your products that will pay, that you only pay when you get a customer or a lead. So look into cost per action networks or performance marketing. Number 10 is we need to actively share this video. We need to tell people about ad fraud and the big problem it is for advertisers so that the world becomes more aware of it. Maybe you can tell your family and friends to stop installing adware and malware because of the importance of your computer security. All of these things are things we need to do as online advertisers to protect our business model. So please go ahead and share this video if you liked it, comment, whatever else you want to do. I hope you enjoyed that and check out the description below for more details on what we talked about today.